Hey guys, Jason from Strictly Broken, back again with another deck profile. Today we are going to be doing Oshinoko. We're going to be doing the 4-3-1 CX split today. Uh, this is probably the most popular build for Oshinoko that you'll see online. Uh, I've played through most of them. I've played the memory deck. I've played the standby piles. In the end, this is, the, probably the, in my opinion, also the best one. I've tried this two different ways. I've tried this with the two solo um, dual laners. And I've tried it with just the combo focus. I think the combo focus is significantly better than the dual laner stuff. Where you didn't actually play the dual laners, you just played them for like value big attackers with plus soul. Um, I just think this is a lot more reliable than that. Uh, but yeah, over the next couple weeks, guys, I do plan to try to pump out a few more deck profiles for some BCS sets to try to get people more prepared and get an idea of what the decks will look like coming into the season. We're going to be probably doing Ayakashi Triangle, Hollow Live, and then. Out of things that I own, that's what I can do, I think. And if people want me to do other things, I can look into other decks as well. And maybe do online deck profiles if I have to. Up, If people want it, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I just want to help people. But yeah, moving on. We're going to be going into this deck. I think this deck is really strong. It's very similar to like 8 Choice Ichika. I think you have some better cards and you have a better finisher. And that's where my appeal lies. But yeah, I also just also just really like Oshinoko, to be honest. More than more than Quinn. Yeah, first things first, we're going to be starting off with our 00i. This is an on reverse memory Ricky, so that means it's on reverse of the character. You can pay one, selectively clock any Oshino Code character from your waiting room to the bottom of your clock. If this is an experience deck, so being able to set the bottom card actually does really matter. It helps your experience. It means you can mulligan your level threes aggressively, because if you see this card, you can, cl you can use it to clock them. That's great. But when it gets reversed and you pay the cost, you can send, you send this to memory, and then you search your deck for any Oshino Code character. Uh, just having the versatility is really nice. Sometimes it's come up where like I have to crash this card at level one as like an extra plus, and then I can use it to search my two one combo, or I've used it to search my level three combo when they're when I'm lacking on them. And I've had people, like players like look at this card and be like, wait, this can search anything. Even in Japan, they had to look at it and like reread it uh, because they didn't believe it could search anything. But it does, which is very nice. Uh, you'll you'll probably see this card get sided by some players uh, because obviously it's an on reverse plus. Uh, I think that's wrong in most cases. I don't think there's ever a reason to really side these cards. You just make them pay their stock, take their damage, and let them get their card. Unless you, like, get a real re like read on their hand, then there's, like, a, maybe a merit. But in general, if they do side you, not the end of the world, our brainstorm can modulate soul so we can make this still a value attacker. Uh, and if not, we need the search, we crash it, we move on, we get our search. So, all the same. Good card, though. Actually, we're going to put these here. We're going to try this, see how people like uh, me displaying them a bit more. Next, we have our 00, zero Akane. This card is an oversized. If you have five or more hand, it is a 3,500 power. And it says when this card reverses your opponent's character, if you have four or less stock, you can bottom deck that character. So it's kind of like the Hakuro from Slime. It's just another plusing zero that we're going to play. We have a lot of tech slots and we play a lot of zeros in this deck. So being able to play eight plusing zeros is pretty nice. This is the biggest attacker we have in the set at zero. Uh, there's not much power in this set to begin with at zero, so playing this is kind of just a meta call to be like, I need to actually kill cards. This could definitely be subbed out with like the, uh, there's a coin flip Kana that was okay, but I really like this card. This card also gives you access to blue if you wanted to play the Fumio. We don't play that card, but it's there. I also really like Akane, she's my favorite. But yeah, uh, big fan of this card. Would not do without it after playing with it. I was not a believer in this card at first either, and then I kind of came into it and I was like, you know... My locals are right. This card is just that good. Uh, I played it in other sets, but I didn't want to play it at that. I really wanted to play with the coin flip or something, but this card just ended up being the overperformer. Another overperformer is our brainstorm. Despite the fact we're only playing two, we only really need to have one on the board, and it's really easy to select for them, so we don't really mind playing only two. But this card reads: it's a tap cell salvage brainstorm, and it says once per turn you play a climax, you can real top card of your deck if it's a level two or higher character or card. You can uh, buff one of your characters plus 1k1 soul. So that's how we make our eye value attacker. Our level 2 and 3 combos do care about canceling. So it just kind of helps you to fish for that cancel to proc your effects. Uh, very strong. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Damage is good. Next we have our other Akane. This is the 0, zero Rico Akane. This card is when you play it, you can discard one. Grill top card of your deck. Salvage a character whose level is equal to or less than the character revealed. So very strong effect. It's one of my favorite effects in Weiss. And then it has the secondary effect that's similar to the Rainy from Hollow Live. It says during this card's battle, when the damage you take is canceled, you can send this to your stock. So 
they attack this card you cancel you win more by getting this to go to stock as well instead of just getting reversed this card's 500 power so this card is like never living otherwise uh it's a bit more balanced than the reine but also helps this deck all the same because you kind of need to stock a little bit early and it kind of helps make sure you're on your stock thresholds great card big fan next we have our climax swapper this climax swapper is pretty broken it's part of what enables us to play this split of four three one choice it is just on play discard a climax with a choice and then salvage a climax with a choice icon for free no stock uh really helps our combos we do generate quite a bit of stock in this deck but the, that gives us just more stock to spend to like ensure we're doing everything we want to be doing just one of those effects that's like if i don't have to spend stock on it why would i spend stock on it notable because there is another climax swapper that you can spend stock on in this set that is a uh, also a clean cut that card is also very good but i think in this deck this is just way more beneficial and like why would you not just play the free climax swapper right super duper strong card next we're onto our tech cards we have our zero zero kane this card is on play look at top two rearrange and then pay one discard one you can look at the top x cards of your deck where x is the number of your oshino co-characters so at best it's a check five at worst it's a check one um card can feel really bad when you don't have the cards and you got to kind of like yolo dig for something but we play this because it rearranges our top two which is nice for like brainstorms and stuff but also because we need to dig for our climaxes obviously that's usually why you play these effects we don't have good ways to get climaxes into our hand until level three so this becomes our best way to do so and sometimes i've had games where i've looped this card like two or three times because of rico and such which feels really bad but you got to do what you got to do it uh anything for the for the climax when it really matters fortunately our level three game uh is a lot easier to get to our climax so we don't actually care nearly as much towards there but it really do need our level one and two climaxes respectively so we got to get we got to get there next we have our zero zero mem again it's an experience deck this card helps subsidize our experience which is super duper strong i'm actually a really big fan of this uh it is while this is in your level this counts as level three and it has its effect that puts itself into level for you it is pay one send this to your level uh by swapping out another character specifically character we do play a level three event in this deck unfortunately you cannot swap that out if you level it but you can swap this with another character in your level zone if you do pay the cost you can look at the top four for a level one or higher card add it to your hand and which is really nice because again level three event that level three event is very core to our top end game plan so the only way to grab that grab our two one grab our one zero uh it just grabs a lot of really good cards and again um experience in this deck is pretty kind i would say we only need three experience up until level three where we need six so because of that this is, you have a lot of time to actually get this card between this and your early play which are your main experience targets really a lot of time to like set that all up so it's super easy to just play one of this next we have our zero zero aqua this card is very similar to the itsuki from quintuple it's the bright itsuki it is act pay one rest this choose one of your characters it gains the following ability on reverse your opponent's character salvage one and this also has the effect while you're level two or higher you can pay one send this to memory to change into the two one aqua that we do in fact play from your waiting room uh, very nice we don't play a lot of red in this deck so i think this is like all of our red if i'm not mistaken and then the level one aqua uh so this is gives you a way to also cheat red so you don't have to pretend like you need it uh so make sure you get some of that aqua because that aqua is a really good card for our top end good card for our two one good work for our, our one zero if you need it all around it's a really good card in a b komaki focus deck but we'll get to that uh, i don't play this card that often but it's really nice with the brainstorm you play like one of this one of the brainstorm or you can play double brainstorm preferably this could definitely be cut for a third brainstorm if you wanted to but i think at least in english is a better card to be cutting for the brainstorm at least until we get the we get that card in english because it's a pr that will not be announced yet but we'll get to that in a second next we have another aqua this is a zero zero aqua i lied this yeah, there was a more red card uh zero zero aqua it is a clock swapper from your hand so it's on play you can choose any card in your clock any card climax event doesn't matter put it to your hand and then choose any card in your hand and put it into your clock so this helps you set your experience this helps you grab your event grab your climaxes if you refresh them or if you need to clock them to like extend your hand first because it's in your hand and it is also pay one drop one refresh the free refresh effect is nice it's a bit anti-synergy with a deck that's all about salvaging but i digress and you know you need the free fresh you need the free fresh but more importantly that clock swap effect is super duper insane because it's super selective we're an experienced deck uh being able to just grab climax or the three zero event is super duper powerful uh I, this is an effect that i think thanks to oshino co i've come to look for this in any set that i can physically play it in and uh, big big fan of this card it's become to me almost as important as like a card like a rico 
uh, i'm really happy and this is a card i only feel like i have to play one of but if i'll play I, I wouldn't mind ever playing two of this card obviously next we have our pr this is the card i just mentioned uh that if you don't have it you can replace it with something else at zero it's fine but we really do hope to get this card sooner than later in english because i think this card as silly as that sounds this level zero even as a one of kind of changed the entire game for me with this deck uh it's just on uh while it's on the board act discard one send this to your deck to search one having deck access in oceanoko is super duper strong i keep saying super duper a lot but it's it's really like some of these cards like feel very stand out to me and like they're it's very funny because all these are like kind of whatever effects but i do think they really mesh together well but yeah this effect is very powerful it gives us deck access that we don't normally have it gives us access to our level one two three combo all of our flex cards basically between rico and this kana we have access to our all of our zeros in our deck at any given time i'm a very big fan of this card it's also a pretty decent attacker which is notable sadly being 25 is actually like of merit in this set yeah i really do like this card a lot uh i've been since i've had this card in the deck i think i've played it like two or three times a game almost every game because it just comes up all the time and then finally our last zero we have our memcho this is just a drop salvage this card is probably the most cuttable card i would actually look to playing a third brainstorm over this card uh, or another kana pr if i could get a second one uh this card is fine uh with eight standby whole life being nerfed this card doesn't get to bounce looters anymore so a bit of its value is gone but it's still a drop salvage all the same and it can bounce cards that are it can open lanes for you if they try to play zeros which matters for both of our combos like i mentioned and it's just a cute card for like when they're gonna plus anyway you might as well open the lane and try to like stick more damage gives you more value attacks okay on to our level ones we have our level one kana combo this card is a cigarettes but in my opinion this card is not just a cigarette it's the best cigarettes that they've ever printed in this game so she is on your turn if all your characters are oshino co characters or if you have another oshino co character whatever it's the, basically the same condition uh this gets 3k power so it's a 7k 8k with the choice which is huge mind you for level one combo i think being 8k like the fern from freerun super duper relevant uh and this has experience too on attack mill top two cards of your deck salvage a character whose levels equal to or lower than the level cumulatively you milled so if you milled a one and a two you can salvage a three etc uh but then what's notable about this card is that it says if you milled a total level of two or more you can uh salvage you can ditch one to salvage any other character oceano co character in your waiting room so if you get to select for almost anything in your deck you get to select for everything in your deck a second time by hand fixing which you know helps you end flood or like get out of like some bricky hands which is really nice and with our level two combo being important it means one singular mid level level two equals two level two combos in our hand which makes tripling a level two combo extremely easy uh all around amazing card really does fuel this like uh level one level two level three combo game plan and in general this is the premier cigarettes if i ever see another cigarettes in the game i will always look at it and be like well this isn't kana so i care about this a lot less uh next card we have is our level two combo so we got our memcho 2-1 another amazing card uh i was a very big sleeper on this card when it first came out i didn't want to believe that this was going to be the play i thought it was just going to be like a cute haha funny but uh this card reads while it's on the board for each of your other characters it gets 1k power which is 10k and then experience uh two or three Doo -doo -doo. that's an OW three so level three uh if it gains when you play the choice salvage one and then on cancel you get to stock two oceanoko characters from your waiting room which if you kind of think about it this card is like if you resolve one of these it's the same as resolving two alice combos in the stock generation aspect at least so you usually slam like three of this right you're, you're getting triple this i think almost every game functionally you slam three of this if a single one of these cancels you effectively salvage three and then double alice combo your opponent in terms of stock resources if you cancel with two of these you've gone plus and if you cancel with all three of these it's effectively like you were resolved uh six alices which is pretty insane i think to think about that you get enough stock like you resolved alice twice off just uh, your opponent triple canceling which obviously they triple canceled but then i was ideally you're fighting for board and like winning with these and then maybe getting another turn of them if that happens i think this like the game kind of snowballs pretty fast if this gets defended similarly to alice but uh this card gets supplemented by our brainstorm pumping its soul which is also super duper cool 
Uh, you randomly get to just like swing threes and fours with this if they're open lanes. Uh, it does really come up. I'm a big fan of the card. Uh, it really smoothed over, before I talk about this card, it really smoothed over the whole like Oshinoko game plan, I would say. Uh, next, we have our 2-1 memory kick counter. We have our 2-1 anti-change counter. And we have our 2-1 aqua. So these are just counters. We won't really bother to talk about these too much. This anti-change counter is the Amelia cost. So it's pay one, drop one, sack one. Very good cost. Very big fan. It's one of my favorite costs for an anti-change counter in the game. Uh, very, just very cheap. And because it's spread around. Next, we have our 2-1 aqua. 2-1 aqua. Super duper good card. He is a level X. He is... Uh, whenever one of your Bikomachi characters attacks, so basically uh, Akane, Ruby, or Kana, whenever one of them attacks, you can choose one of your characters and pump it 1k power. So it helps spread around power and give you like a little, little, a lot of offense, especially if somebody tries to go high in one lane, you can actually like reasonably scale over. And then it is also a thing for a level, one, a level three combo. It says uh, if our level three Kana combo is in the center center, uh, it gains the effect to scry the top card of your opponent's deck our level three combo is basically an icy tail so we like to be able to scry climax to the bottom of our opponent's deck very strong next we have our early play of choice this is the level three mem cho level three mem is uh she's in a two or less cx early play fine you know nothing right home about then she says if you have another oshinoko character in case oshinoko this gets 1k power, so it'll be 10-5, basically always. And she is experience 3. While this is on, when you play this, you can either choose one of the following two effects. Either look at the top three cards of your deck. You get to pick one from them, add it to your hand, and then put the rest in on the top of your deck in any order. So that matters for our Ruby climate, our Ruby brainstorm stacking. It matters for like stacking our triggers so we know when to attack to attack for our Kana combo. And in general, if maybe we need to brainstorm or something after, or like shuffle our deck with Kana, we can have that kind of access to doing stuff. Uh, super nice. Uh, I'm actually going to stop doing this because it actually didn't work out super duper well. Unfortunately, because of the, the light. But that's okay. We'll try to figure out something with that. Yeah, so Kana. Or Kana, Memcho. Uh, perfectly fun early play. It's our experience target of choice as well. That's why we play three. We might probably only play two of this if I didn't have to be an experience deck. But not once we play three. Card's fine. It, I don't play it every game. But the games I play it, it does help a lot. Next, we have our bouncer. This is a one stock effective bouncer. If you have four mother dudes, it's unplay stock one from your waiting room. And then it is uh, unplay bounce one, and then you can ditch one to bounce another. Really strong double bouncer. Kind of like, it's like the Chainsaw Man one. Uh, having double bounce, again, really good because our level three combo needs to cancel. So you can open two lanes, which gives them effectively plus one soul before you even count your brainstorm. And it's only one stock. So it's like super duper cheap. Next, we have our level three combo. So this is the main draw, I would say, to this co this uh, deck. I think this combo is super duper sick and it's super strong. It is an on-play heal. And then this climax combo, experience six, on attack, pay one. This gains the following effect. When this card damage is canceled, you mill the bottom three cards of your opponent's deck. You burn two X times, where X is the number of level zero cards, so characters and climaxes. Uh, so this card can actually output a lot of damage it's usually, like, I would say EV, a cancel burn 2, which isn't the best thing to write home about. But anytime it hits, you know, two cards, burn 2, burn 2 is insane. Triple burn 2 is, like, ridiculous. So the reach on this card can be, like, very polarizing, and it feels kind of bad to, to die to sometimes. Because you mill, like, climax, climax 0, and you're just like, oh, nice, I'm dead. Even just milling 3 zero, level 0 characters, you're just like, oh, I'm dead. Like, Aaron Titan could never, honestly. But yeah, I really do like Kana's combo it's very it's very complemented by the next card we're going to talk about and the fact that we get to pump a lot of soul and like make open lanes it just means that this card swinging for anywhere from like four to five is not unfounded uh and you know when you're swinging a bunch of four and fives it's going to cancel obviously the aqua two one that we mentioned can make the center lane also get to like stack the climax potentially it's only a one card mocha so it's not super real it happens but uh it's fine you know, anytime it does happen, it's basically free, and that, that Aqua is there to pump power anyway. So, great combo. And then finally, the I would say probably the crux of Oshinoko is this 3 0 event. Uh, this card is pretty insane. So, it has two real effects 
uh, it is on play. You can search your deck for the for any choice, any choice. So this is what lets us play the four three one split. If the Kana Climax is in our deck, we get to search it. If not, we can go search for any choice, add it to our hand, and then like Climax swap and do it if it's in our waiting room. Or it says you can uh, choose one of your characters. You pay four, and the character gains on attack burn three. Or you can choose one of your characters, give it 4k power, and send this to stock. This, that effect doesn't matter. I don't think I've ever used that effect. I guess it, in the rare circumstance, it could actually matter. If you see two of these in your hand, you have six stock. You can triple Kana, send one of these to stock. You know, now you have triple Kana live. Uh, that effect almost like never comes up. Realistically, it's the pay for. Give your character on attack burn three, which does prog your Kana uh, combo, obviously. And the search CX, which is the main function of this card. You basically you always want to have one of these in your hand. I'll mulligan this card at first, but then I think at any point afterwards, if this card opens into my hand, I'll just death grip it and I'll stop letting go and I'll play minus one hand for the rest of the game because uh, it matters so much until I see like, you know, if the pieces come together and I see like the Kana combo in my hand, I might just hold on to that instead. But, you know, things have to be be going a certain way. But uh, this card's really good. The pay four actually does come up because like I said, the, con the uh, Memcho level 2-1 it stock charges you so much sometimes where like you can kind of like really snowball into it and there's games where i've had like 10 12 14 stock in a game and suddenly you know you go kana 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 oh i have the climax because it's in my grave or whatever and then i have another climax in my hand because my deck is super compressed so i just drew them cx swap into that and then you can go play this give four pay four give the kana on attack burn three I think the best I've done with this card was like resolve two of these with the burn fours or the burn threes, which felt pretty insane. That was like, and there was like 15, 16 stock that game. So I was just like canceling up the wazoo. And then I just, you know, double burn threes with Kana combo. Uh, I think it's very hard to survive that. It's like pretty insane, but yeah, that is the deck guys. Um, I said Oshinoko. I'm a very big fan of this deck. It is a very relevant deck for the format. I think. Kana is just super duper strong and it will definitely get games. Memcho is super powerful into decks that are, are like not board based decks, like 1k1 decks, because like this card can reasonably like stay alive. Even versus some situational board decks be between like anti-change counter, 2-1 counter, which Memcho obviously can salvage. Uh, it's very real to defend her. And Kana combo is insane and being just 8k offensive means like you are very good into like standby decks as well. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite decks right now as well. Uh, I do recommend people try it and play it, especially if you can get it for like fairly reasonably priced. If, if you like Oshinoko, just know there is a deck for you to play that is very competitively viable. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the memory deck, like the, uh, the twins deck or like the Akane stuff. I think the Akane stuff is like pretty bad as much as I like Akane and I, I do have fun playing it. And if anybody wanted to see like the Mimi or fun build I have for Akane, I would definitely be, be down to show you guys. But in terms of competitive viability, this is the competitive deck. So definitely recommend looking at it, taking a look. Uh, expect it. I would not be surprised to see this in an event. And knowing, not knowing what it does can definitely like get you. Uh, especially if you're like a stock charge deck, for instance, where you could be stock charging your zeros and playing around this proactively to kind of dodge this card's effect. You're just doing yourself a disservice. So yeah, that's everything, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And if there's any decks you want me to take a look at, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to ask me any questions, you can message me on Discord at Prince underscore WS or ask them in the comments. You can also follow me on Twitter, same handle, Prince underscore WS on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, thanks guys. You have a good one.